What's poppin' guys, it's Ether. Now for set 2, I had a whole batch of faction features I wanted to do, but at this point the cards I ordered back in December are not that close to their final versions. So this video is a bit of a hybrid showcase, a bit of rambling, a bit of talking about a few of the things that went into making set 2. Maybe some of this information will help you guys when making or planning your sets for your own game. But enough of the preamble, let's get started. So set 2's original codename was Miami and the original aesthetic was going to be seemed around that Vaporwave Outrun art style. Uh, on screen you'll see me scrolling through the design document for the set. It was a bit more like Ravnica, in the sense that the districts played a larger role, kind of like the different like houses and guilds of Ravnica. At this point, set 2 was going to be about 150 cards. During pretty early in development, I decided to scale that back because, you know, being a one-person team, it's kind of hard to... You know, it takes a while to do 100 cards, it takes longer to do 150, and then there's just a lot more to balance with that, so I drilled the scope back a little bit. You can still see some of the elements from the early design, though, in the current set. Each of the designers come from one of the original districts that were going to be featured, and certain backgrounds kind of cover the different districts, like the marble pillars for Didon cards, the scale pattern for Avernus cards, or the crescent moon for Mysticia cards. So you can still see that in the background patterns on cards in set 2, coming out in March. Later on in development, I decided to make the set more focused on directly Saber vs Rebels, and it changed a bit more. You'll notice for example most Legion Core cards in the set have the Saber background or the Rebel background, instead of any specific one for the Scrapyard District or Concordia. If we come back to Hyperius in a different set, I like to show off the ideas I had for the different districts a bit more. And I guess while talking about backgrounds, here's a uh, sheet of all the different main backgrounds in the set. They're based on the little mini factions, so you have the Senator background, Saber, Rebellion, Fortuna Coven, Ivory Order. These are all groups in the lore in set 2 that you can learn about in Beneath the Cards as more videos come out about the new lore. Looking through the original design documents has a lot of interesting information though. Like I forgot that the original concept for Saber was a society called the High Society all about maintaining the status quo. I guess it was a little bit more on the nose then. The Rebellion are still pretty much unchanged from the original drafts though. Again, I talk more about the new lore and what's changed when you see the new lore in new uh, Beneath the Cards videos. Stay subscribed. I guess the last fun thing to mention is that set 2 is kind of a B storyline to set 1. Set 3 will follow more of the characters from set 1, and set 4 will follow again more characters from set 2. That's why you don't see that many crossovers between characters in set 1 and characters in set 2. There's a lot more in the original draft, but I changed that over time. You know, making these sets can take a while, right? I've been working on set 2 now, probably for over a year, so a lot of things can change in a year. One thing that changed for the better though, I think, were character names. I've taken note sometimes of names that were a bit hard to say out loud and changed them over time. For example, Ansem's original name was Avis, Overseer's original name was Affine, and Tastebee's original name was Yadaris, although that might be an example of a name made a little bit harder to say. Gameplay wise though, the mini factions have also evolved over time, a little bit, to get a better unique style I think on how to go about winning the game. For example, the original idea of Senators were a deck of boss monsters that worked in their own deck but also worked well together. They still work in their own deck and kind of function like that, but they can't be full boss monsters. One of the cool things about Astronomica and its resource system is that you could play almost every card in any deck just based on the planets you run, and choosing those planets can decide how janky and how inconsistent your deck might want to be, but I think that also leaves a lot of possible creativity in deck building. This resource system also makes these boss monsters way easier to play in this game though than I think in many others, and so it's hard to balance trying to get multiple into the same deck. Uh, I might take another shot at it in the future, but I think for now, I'm fine with where they are. So overall this video was a bit of a collection of me rambling about set 2's design and development over the year. Uh, it's just me wanting to say that things changing drastically over development is normal, right? So when you work on your own game, don't worry about having to go back to the start or anything like that, right? That happens. Don't feel too bad if you spend a lot of time working on rules, card templates, lore, art, etc, right? Things take time. But that's all I have to say for this video. As always, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it and want to keep up with the channel, and as always, stay wavy.